Hey, so this is how we're going to remove the rear struts and suspension from the back of an Alfa Romeo GT. This is a 2005 1.9 JTD. First thing we need to do is get in there with a wire brush and really just, just give everything a bit of a scrub because there's going to be lots of rust back here and the rust makes the bolts really hard to get out. So we'll give them a scrub down with a wire brush and then put some plus gas or WD-40 on there to help loosen them up. Uh, we'll be starting by removing the um, brake caliper and then we'll come down from underneath the brake caliper to the uh, rear parts of the suspension, move some bolts from there. Then we'll be going inside the car and removing a single top bolt and then the whole thing will just drop out. Um, so yeah, okay, it's, it's not really a difficult job. It's just difficult in that things get rusted and they don't move and whatnot. So let's just crack on with that and see how we go. So this is the top link, job link, sorry. We're gonna get around that. These things rust solid and they can be an absolute nightmare to remove. So we're gonna get in there Remove the crud. As much as possible. Right in. Okay. Then a little bit of plus gas. Give it a good soak front and back. There we are. Now while that's soaking in, we can move on to this one just here. Okay, so this bolt goes all the way through to this side, and there's a spacer in there as well. This is the most difficult bolt to remove. So, once again, let's get on there, try and remove as much rust as possible. On both sides, move the camera over, maybe you can see a bit better. Really get in here. You see how rusty that is. Good soaking, and then give the spacer a good soaking as well. And then, in between, in between this uh, strut, the bolt carries on through, and you can see it down this gap. So give that a good soaking, and then the bolt on the other end. Try not to spray it in your eye. Okay, so that's that bit. Next we need to move on to moving the brake caliper. Right, the next stage is to remove the caliper. There's two bolts, there's one at the top, which you might not be able to see, and there's one at the bottom, just there. Okay, you're gonna need a 13 mil spanner to undo those.
Okay, and back, you've got my lump hammer. Uh, there it is. Okay, so just gonna give it a couple of, just to loosen it. Okay. And then we can use a crowbar just to get in there. Press that down there. Let's put this cable under there. So as you can see what's going on. So that's that bit there. Okay, so now we need to move back around to the front. Right, so back to the drop links. You're gonna need a ring spanner like this one. It's a size 17. Okay, longer the better because you need a little bit of leverage. And if you've got them, a set of Allen keys. Um, so I think it's H5. H5. Now, this metal is so soft, it's stupid. Um, it will almost certainly round out as you're trying to do this, but you know, you just have to do the best you can. So the best thing to do is to hammer it in place. It's to hammer that in place as much as you can get it before you start to get a bit of a grip. And then you want to get your 17mm ring spanner, okay, whack it over the top, put it in a place where you've got some leverage. And then you can attach, I don't know what size is that, let me think. Is it a 12, do you think? No, it's not 12. There we are. So we can use the 10 to counter it. And, oh, there we go. Okay, so we're a bit further on. Oh, look at that. It's literally just come off. Can you see that? that split and then we just push it behind there so we need to give all of this a clean out and we need to really give that a clean out as well so we'll put that back on for now we'll put that back on with it and then we'll actually clean these threads out so it'll make it easier for it to uh, come back on so that's that stage Now then, we need to release these pipes, okay, because they're, they're attached to here. So um, if we get them out of the way when it comes to taking the... Um, when it comes to taking the, uh, um, 
the suspension off just makes it a little bit easier Oh, there's a little spring, that's why. There's a little spring holding it there. You lift up out of the way. Ah, there we go. And that's that bit out. So at least that part of the job is done. So now what we're going to be moving on to are the two bolts on the side. Now these are going to be pigs and you will need a breaker bar for it. Okay, but I'm going to have a cup of tea and I'll speak to you in a bit. Okay, so now we're on to the next two bolts. They're both 19, so here's the top one. The other one's down here, we'll show you that in a minute. The one that's down here is really difficult. This one is just difficult. So you will need um, a breaker bar, okay? With a 19 mil on the end of it. the advantage of having the car up on really high axle stands is that you get a lot more angle. Well here it is, the little bugger, it's out. It took me about 20 minutes to get this out and I found the only way you can do it is to um, loosen as much as you can and then tighten and then loosen and then tighten and loosen and tighten. And if you've got a lump hammer and you'll need uh, one of these, which is a punch at the other end and or maybe a centre punch, which I do have, but I can't find it. Um, you'll need to give that sort of a good bang, okay, to as hard as, you, as hard as you can to it, as far as it will go, and then get back on it with a torque wrench or a, um, um, a torque drill, like my one, and then use that to loosen it a bit more and then tighten it again, and then go through the process of hammering it one end, loosen, tighten, hammering one end, loosen, tighten, add more plus gas or WD-40, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, and then it, it, it comes out sort of like five millimeters at a time. You just really have to work through it. It will come out eventually, but it's not like most bolts. It won't just slide out, you know, you've got to work at it. So now we can work on the really tough one, which is that one. Um, I've seen videos of people taking this one out before and it looks like an absolute nightmare. So once again, it's going to be a case of getting the breaker bar on it and working at it tight and loose and tight and loose and tight and loose. And it's been soaking in plus gas for most of the morning, um, topping it up. Um, so let's just see what happens.
Now you have to excuse me, I've got arthritis, so standing up and down is a real struggle for me. So if it takes me time, that's why. <laughs> In the break of our, it's that time. Okay. Loosened it a little bit, so let's get it back in there. Uh, go on manual control because what I want to do is work plus gas into it. So Okay, so this is what we're having to deal with here on this particular bolt. As you can see, the amount of crust and rust and just rubbish that's stuck in there. So I've had an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Dremel with a wire brush on it. So as I can reach inside that gap and try and clear off as much of it as I possibly can. So I'll be back after I've had a cup of tea. Bye. Okay, so I got my Dremel and I put it inside here and cleaned as much of the rust off with a, a sandpaper attachment on it on the bolt that actually goes um, through. So uh, then I've soaked it in more plus gas. You can use WD-40, it's the same thing really. And now I'm back on with the breaker bar. So let's just see how we're doing. That's a good sign, isn't it? I wonder if we can get the impact on it yet. Let's have a go. It doesn't really do much, but it is moving the bolt around, which means that we could perhaps start. Hitting it from the other side. Let's see what happens. I've got a couple of millimeters. Okay, so this is going to be another one of those where you're just going to have to leave me to hit it through. I'll tell you how long it takes in a sec.
think we are nearly there. It's not as far as it'll go. Look at that. And out. Oh, and look at the crud. I mean, that's why. So we need to make sure we give this a good, good clean. Okay. And try and remember. So it's a spacer. Sorry, there's a. Yeah. Spacer first. Then a washer. Then another washer. And then the bolt. Alright. So keep that together. Right, so from the inside there's a 22mm bolt that actually holds the suspension up. To get to it from the driver's side, which is the off side, you need to remove this part of the panel, okay? It's held in with three screws. It's held in with three screws, one just there, and then two just here. And they, the, the two at the back are just behind the seat belt mount, okay? So you undo those first. You sort of, what I did was I pulled the, the uh, seats forward to give me better access. Undid those two. Undid that one, and then using a trim remover tool like this, so you don't scratch anything, just leave it in the way. There is a cable there connecting the light, just pull that off. And then underneath, here's your mount area, and there is a piece of carpet that's already been cut out. And if you lift that up, there's a 22 mil um, bolts underneath. So all we need to do now is undo that. When you first start undoing it, you'll feel the, um, the suspension strut twisting in here. Don't worry about it, just let it twist as far as it will go and then it will get to a point where it can't twist anymore, but the bolt will crack. So you can then start undoing it. Right, now hopefully with a bit of wriggling, we can pull this out. One of the things to be careful of is to make sure you've moved these cables. So this is uh, the brake cable, and then we've got the ABS sensor cable, which is a thinner cable around it. They're in little metal brackets. Just pull them out with a screwdriver and just make sure they're out of the way because you don't want them to snag. And then... that for today but what we'll do tomorrow is we'll look at whether or not this is going to be worth refurbishing and saving or if we're going to have to go new 
Okay, hope this helps.